<laughs> With us this morning, everyone who was marooned on Gilligan's Island, the entire cast here in New York, Bob Denver, Alan Hale, Tina Louise, Russell Johnson, Don Wells, and Natalie Schaefer. And Jim Backus is joining us from the ABC station in Los Angeles, KBC TV. Hello, Jim. How are you? How are you? It's the first time I've ever seen the cast with their clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you look good. I love every... Oh, come on, Alan. You're kidding with that suit. <laughs> Watching all the girls go by. Yeah. Big Julie, baby. I love the hat. Alan, you're the one that said people need nonsense, and Gilligan's Island certainly gave people nonsense. It looked like it was such a fun show to do, wasn't it? Kathy, in that sense, it really is true. You know, that's one of the big ingredients that was making the show so successful all through the years, the fact that people do need nonsense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through all the years that I've uh, been associated, of course, with Gilligan's Island, but going all over the world, people reach out and they have to touch you. Mm. There's a genuine fondness for the show. It's really, it's a remarkable thing. The, the skipper has taken me many places, and I must say that always with the open arms. It's just a lovely thing. And it's I'm sure lady. they say skipper, right? Oh, hey, exactly. Skipper. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. How about you, Bob? Was it fun for you? You had to oh, take yeah. an awful lot of falls. No, no, I really loved it. I mean, uh, doing Gilligan was like doing all the physical jokes I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Falling down or into the palm tree. And, uh, you never hurt yourself? <laughs> no, I really, well, I had the big man here I could run into every time. <laughs> you know, he would just catch me. Just and, bounce you know, right off. Really good, yeah. <laughs> this is our Gilligan's Island set here. Yeah, I know. It's it's really, really, a lot of plants, yes. Jim, out there in Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, thanks for getting up so early, by the way. Oh, it's <laughs> not at all. It was rather early. I brought Teddy with me just to keep you company. Keep you company. Well, well, we miss you out here. Listen, the critics hated your show when it first premiered in 1964, but people have just loved it and they still love it. Why is that? Well, as Alan said, it's uh, to me, it's I, I watch it. Uh, on Saturday, uh, they run them back to back, and I sit there crying a lot. Uh, but I, I think I, it was just pure nonsense, and it was a joy to do, and I think it's a joy to watch now because the infectious quality comes over after all these years. Of course, we're all the same age. <laughs> right. It's, and it's pretty. Pardon me? Go ahead. Well, I think one of the things is you knew that no one was going to get hurt, that we would all wind up at the end of the episode. It was just pure make-believe, like pictures should be, and we should have more of them. But we also knew you'd never get off the island, too. And Russell, what do you think? Do you think what he said is, is right about why people continue to tune in the show year after year? Well, I absolutely agree. I mean, uh, the key ingredient to me is the fact that nobody really ever got hurt. Uh -huh. And it was fulfilled a lot of fantasies for a lot of people. And... Uh, you just knew that uh, no matter what the trials and tribulations were, these people were all going to get out of it, uh -huh. and there was going to be another episode, another attempt. Right. But nobody got hurt, and uh, it was gentle and, and sweet. You were such a wonderful inventor, and you could never invent something to get you off the Yay! <laughs> we used to talk about that a lot. I tell you something, though. Everything the professor said, scientifically, <clears throat> was correct. Really? Sherwood Schwartz, our producer, our creator, made sure that that was so, so that the kids were never given false information. See, Gilligan's Island was an educational show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger, oh, Ginger, see, it happened to keep, I'm sorry. You played Ginger, who, of course, was the movie star. Mm -hmm. I don't know how she had that dress look so good after being marooned on an island. It still looks it still looks good, and so do you. You look wonderful. Oh, thanks. So you said that Ginger was the ultimate flirt. What did you mean by that? Well, you know, I flirted with uh, everything from uh, an astronaut to a robot. And, and you know something? <laughs> I, you know, I was thinking about it. I never kissed anyone. Never in all those years? I never kissed anyone. It was just flirting. Me. Flirting. No, no, I'm just <laughs> touching everybody on the shoulder and just, you know, did it all with the eyes and the face. And it was so much fun. And like everybody says, we were a family. Uh, we weren't the conventional family, not the mother and the father. But, you know, we were a family. And we had a lot of fun. And we loved each other. And when we had problems, you know, we solved them just like everybody else out there. And I think that's what people identified with. Don Wells, you were uh, Mary Ann. You were one of the normal people on the island. I think everybody could identify with you. How much do you think fantasy and escapism played a part in the success of Gilligan's Island? Oh, a lot. And you know, I also think, uh, listening to what everybody else was saying, we were the first of, of 
of a pretty picture. Most of the situation comedies in that day and age were living room comedies almost. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful to look at, the palm trees, the beautiful setting. Now you have Fantasy Island, the love boats and that. But we really were the first of that. And I also think the blend of the chemistry of people. Mm -hmm. We were all a little so larger important. than life, you know? The characterizations were a little superhuman. And I think that was part of it too. Yes. Yeah. Natalie, when the first one, you said somewhere one that I read that, that you wish the show was still in production. But you didn't really feel that way, did you, 18 years ago? Oh, no. <laughs> I was in New York, and when they sent me the script, I thought, like, this will never go. Why was that? <laughs> well, it was so unlike anything I'd ever read or anything I'd ever been in or anything I'd ever seen. And I didn't really want to leave New York, and my agent said to me, oh, this will never go, but you want to go to Hawaii, and it's a great chance to go to Hawaii, That's and right. go ahead and do it. And so I went ahead and did it, and at Christmas time, I was in uh, Puerto Vallarta, and my mother was very ill, and I was very nervous about being there, and a telegram was brought to me one evening, and I opened it, and I loved it, and I burst into tears, and everybody came around thinking my mother had died, and they said, I don't know, the scene was so <laughs> and how do you feel about it now? You oh, I loved it. I'd love to go right on doing it. I love another series, and I never thought I'd say that. That's <laughs> well, Don said it. You were all larger than life to us. How, how much of a problem has that been in terms of being typecast now for other roles? Bob, for you, has well, it no, been a I think it's been, um, it's been helpful in the sense that you're on this, you know, air every day in these five days a week. And, um, like, I'm doing dinner theater a lot of the years. In fact, I'm in San Diego now at the Lyric with my wife, and we're doing Out on the Pussycat. So everybody in San Diego comes see us. And um, I think it's helped. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Plus, Gilligan's really a fantasy character in the way, and I don't yeah. think people really expect me to be that way. Are you? <laughs> oh, never mind, you guys. Oh, never mind. Well, that's another story. I think you are, too. <laughs> you got to be pretty smart to be that dumb. You know? That's true. <laughs> Tina, were you, is typecasting the reason that you were the only original cast member that didn't make the subsequent movies? Uh, well, I, I just think that I, I camped so well uh, that it was kind of <laughs> difficult for me to get back to what I was doing before. Uh, I had just become a member of the Actors Studio when I took the job, and as Natalie says, I, I just thought it would run a year and I'd get back to do what I was doing, but after three years, it was kind of hard, and finally, you know, I, it, it was difficult, and then I started getting the dramatic parts, and I didn't want to confuse all these casting agents. I just knew that just that one person that I wanted yeah. to impress would tune in the night I was on uh, that um, charming movie of the week. It's amazing how things work out, though. Nobody would have ever but, thought. But I do think that the, the tune-in value and, you know, being on the air all the, day, all the time, every day, is wonderful for me when I'm doing the dramatic, you know, work that I like to do. And, of course, Alan, you've already told us that everybody all around the world calls you Skipper. And uh... Yes, well, I must say, you know, it's been a, a very, uh, how would I say, gratifying thing. Uh, certainly on the West Coast now, I have a a place that I call uh, the Lobster Barrel. I've eaten there, and it's which, wonderful. Uh, I'm just so delighted about it. That, and there again, it's the skipper, you see. But yeah. apropos what you said early on in the show, the idea that really every knock was a boost. Yeah. Okay. And the more people uh, read about the fact of how bad it was, the more they liked it. Which <laughs> well, is... I sure did. Speaking of a boost, and out on the West Coast, Jim, you're still with us. That's good. You haven't fallen asleep with your teddy no, yet. No, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, I must love these kids. I, I got up at 3 o'clock this morning and uh, to get down here for the reunion because I'm going to work at 20th Century Fox at 7 in makeup and I intend to faint a lot during the day but it's been such a <laughs> He wants all of you to know that he's still a working actor. Yes, I've heard that, Jim. Jim. I play a wino. Oh. I guess. <laughs> Far cry from Thurston Howell. Gilligan's what? Island was one of the most successful shows in syndication ever but I understand none of you ever receive residuals. Is that true? How do you feel about it? Oh, how do you feel about it? <laughs> I read. <laughs> Deeply hurt. <laughs> really? Jim, would you make another Gilligan's Island? In a minute. When we were making it, I used to cry about the hours and how late it was, and we worked in the lagoon and it was cold. But looking back now, oh, brother, do I wish we were doing it. It was a, really a license to steal money. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's funny. The, the, Get the your cast son. was, we're, we're, we're like family. Well, you'll have yeah. to get yourself all a better contract this time that, that includes residuals. You Next know? time. Oh, yes. <laughs> would you all, do you feel the same way you'd all do it again? I think I'd Absolutely. love to do it again. Yeah. Well, I we wish you would. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I vote for a new reunion. Back to Gilligan's Island. <laughs> really? really? <laughs> Thank you all so much for being with us. Thank, Thank you, Kathy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a wonderful holiday. Oh, you too. The Oak Ridge Boys. We'll be right back.